When you think of McDonald's, chances are that you have fond memories. Whether it be the old commercials of Ronald Grimace and all their friends, or immersing yourself in childhood whimsy at a small themed playgrounds outside your local McDonald's, many associate McDonald's were fun. Yeah, that's what I originally thought too. The year was 2005, I had just come back from working my shift at the police station. Nothing overly eventful had happened, save for the occasional cat stuck in the tree or whatever. Nothing much really ever happened in my small town at all, apart from one random missing children incident years before. I say children, but that's relative. They were in their early adulthood and I was in my mid-40s, but that ended up being a cold case. Although we would talk about it from time to time at the precinct. Back when I was starting out, I had received the case that five children in different neighborhoods had gone missing without any sign of leaving or a struggle. The thing they had in common was that all of them had a VHS playing in the TV at the time. However, unfortunately, the tapes were mysteriously blank when submitted into evidence. So all we could do was just chalk it off to coincidence. I remember that day, I had a small bit of time to kill after, and that's when I remembered it was a yearly yard sale nearby. There was a family on the next block over from me that did this on the exact same day every year. After a few minutes of pursuing and checking out what was available, my eyes landed on one particular VHS tape. In thick, squiggly letters, I read, The Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald, Weekend at Ronald's. I hadn't heard of this VHS tape before. I thought it was rare, so naturally I was practically ecstatic about the find. I was grabbing my wallet to snap it up within seconds. For what I could understand, there had been seven of these tapes in total, all centered around the titular of Ronald McDonald and all his friends in McDonald land. The group consisted of Ronald, Birdie the Early Bird, Grimace, Sunday the Dog, the Hamburglar, and two kids called Tika and Franklin. Take it. It's free. I jolted the back as an old woman appeared from seemingly nowhere behind the other side of the table. The video seemed like it might be fun, lighthearted, watch while drunk. Why not spend 40 or so minutes watching whimsical, brainless content? Sure, I'll take it, I responded. I reached out to take it and she quickly grabs my wrist, near bone breaking for an old woman. Oh, but when you see it, it sees you. I looked at her and felt like there was nothing behind her eyes, maybe Alzheimer's or something. Honestly, this strange encounter made me want to watch the tape even more. Once I reached home, I got out the VCR, which I'll admit hadn't been touched in some time. The tape began with nothing really interesting happening in the live action segments. Just regular kid stuff, you know? Ryan McDonald goofing off and the like. However, the animated segment is where things got a, a little more interesting. Robert and the gang had been invited to a Halloween party in a mansion and just had to get there. But the thing was, the mansion was so big they didn't know which room in the party was being held in. Poor Birdie had become so terrified they wouldn't make it that she popped out three eggs, all of which came out with screaming, pulsating baby birds. It was just the kind of weird stuff I was looking for. I was having a bit of fun with the musical numbers even. It all changed about 10 minutes in though. Members of the gang had started going missing one by one and only Ron was left standing. As Ronald creaked his way down the crumbling stairs, with his eyes being the only indicator of him moving, he flicked on the light and let out a scream which sounded like it came from a wild animal. Then the scream turned into laughter, maniacal laughter. It was the missing kids who disappeared all those years before, but at the same time everything was different about them. To this day I can remember the grotesque detail on how they looked. The kids were dressed as the McDonald Lane gang. Hamburglar's mouth looked as if every tooth, except for one, had been forcibly torn out of his head, blood cascading down his pinstriped suit. Grimace was nowhere to be seen, but I didn't dare question where he was. The children, Tika and Franklin, were also nowhere to be found, but then again, they hadn't seen much the whole episode. Sunday the dog was a raspy, heavy breathing monster, his face covered by his fur. I wouldn't even know it was him if not for his brick red hair. And Birdie had what I hoped to God to be catch up on her bib. Her wings, looking like mangled limbs, what sounded like a dozen pops and cracks emaciating each time she moved. What looked to be a beak was crudely stitched onto her face, threatening to break off easily. Meanwhile, the McNugget buddies barely looked like their cartoon counterparts. Where would be the crispy, flaky batter? They were just covered from head to toe in blisters. I felt nauseous. What have they done to these kids? The audio and video started breaking up, but one thing was crystal clear. The gang, they just stood there smiling at the viewers, somehow seeming to smile at me. 
and then Rama began edging closer and closer until I could see his seemingly mascara-ridden eyes boring into mine. A distorted voice said, There's always room for one more in McDonald's land. The TV cut to black and without warning, a pale white hand attached to a red and white striped sleeve shot out to the television along with the top of Ronald's head peering out, along with pieces of broken glass stuck to it. He moved faster than I expected and grabbed my ankle. He started dragging me in. Behind him, I could see the typical McDonald's mascots holding the kids by their shoulders, all of them laughing with a gigantic grin. However, in all the kids' eyes, I could see was pain and fear. Get away from me, I screamed, kicking the clown hard in the face. Are you going to join us in here eventually? Ronald laughed, bleeding from his face. And then, with several clicks from his irregularly contorted bones, he crawled backward into the TV. It was over. Or so I thought. For months after, I was constantly plagued with nightmares. These nightmares would have me stuck in a hellish version of Ronald McDonald's house. There would be a distorted, deafening version of the show's theme song as if it was being played on a broken tape or vinyl. During these dreams, I would be chased by one of the nightmarish mascots of the McDonald Lane gang. Each time one would find me, they would stop dead in their tracks, grin, and hold up a different number. Each counting down to something. 10, then 9, then 8, and so on. Each character had their own creative way of disposing of me. Ronald would maniacally bash my brains in. Sunday would maul and mangle me. Or McNugget buddies would all jump onto my stomach and begin piercing my flesh with their little beaks. And so it all ended one day and I woke up in a hospital. As it would turn out, Ronald McDonald had knocked me unconscious and the nightmares had put me in a coma. A concerned colleague stopped by my house after not hearing from me for a while and had found me unconscious next to the coffee table. Needless to say, I was in a very bad condition. I'm on my journey toward healing now and have not been plagued with any nightmares since. However, there's still one thing that worries me. What were the counting down to? Was it a countdown until the end of my coma? Or was it a reminder that one day, I would eventually cross over into their world? I guess only time will tell.